Hi, and welcome to Books in Action. My name is Larry Petricaro, and I'm here with Sarah Lester, who is the director of the Maplewood Public Library, and Amanda Eigen, who is the head of library services. And there's a whole lot of services in, in the library now. I was surprised when we talked about it. But we're going to talk tonight about the um, Maplewood Ideas Festival, and we'll give you a little bit of an idea of what it is, uh, the background, how it came to be, but, but in addition we want to talk and let you know who are some of the participants and some of the people that are going to be uh, at the Ideas Festival. One, it's going to happen, some of the mechanics, so that you'll have the opportunity to be there. So first let me say, Sarah and Amanda, thank you for joining us. I do appreciate that. And maybe we'll start with the simple, or what's maybe an easy place to start. What is the Idea Festival and um, how did it come about? So, um, the Ideas Festival started um, in 2000, 2014. In 2014, and it was really um, it was my second year at the library as director, and I wanted a way to celebrate the talent and creativity in our community, modeling after the New Yorker Festival, but making it free and open to all, just like all of our programs are at the mm -hmm. library. So we came up with, um, we had a very a sort of a small but powerful festival in 2014, and we've been going ever since. I can let Amanda tell you a little bit more. Uh, no, I mean, that, that is, that's the gist of it. Um, we, we really just wanted to showcase um, the enormous creativity of the community. And, um, you know, and it was, it was Sarah's brainchild really but um, we were all on board right away um, because it was just it was really a way to kind of um, also make the library a center for the community which is as we see it and we wanted everybody else to see it that way too oh yeah I, I think that's wonderful I mean I, I think the library is the center of a community and I, I think the the way things have changed and we'll talk about that when we talk about the festival itself but you said you've um, modeled it on the New Yorker Festival. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you uh, replicate it where it's an entirety, or did you feel that there was a need to maybe make some adjustments to, because of where we are, or just simply because of what you wanted to get across? Well, I guess what I always liked about when I would read the announcements for the New Yorker Festival is just the breadth of it. And living in Maplewood and South Orange, we have, I mean, such an incredible talent pool right in a very you know, small area. So when we were talking as a group and amongst um, our library staff, you know, we realized we could we could do the something on a smaller scale, but something equally impactful here in our community. Um, and you know, we have so many interesting people um, that we thought we didn't want to do just a book festival. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to celebrate, you know, culture and music, um, literature, obviously, and. Um, uh, all sorts of things um, and uh, because these are our users too mm -hmm. these are the people that come into our our libraries um, and who find all sorts of information in our libraries so it really is just it's just where we live and and you know the people in our neighborhood really a talented bunch yes. and Andrew, do you have anything you want to add to that well and we knew <coughs> that if we if we didn't limit it we knew that if we um, opened it to art, music, culture, to, to all areas that we could really reach all ages and um, you know all groups of people who live here and use the library regularly. Um, so that was another reason to not just make it about books. About books. But we do. That being said, the um, the festival ends with um, the Maplewood Literary Award. And so that is really the, the most prominent piece of the festival, and we're really excited, you know, about every year that we've done this, but, but this year as well. This, oh, yeah, and we'll, and we'll talk yeah. about that because I, I see it as the biggest place on the poster, right. so <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that. But the, um, when you first started the festival, you said 2014, so this is what, the sixth? Yes. The sixth festival. Have, have there been any uh, organic type of changes? I hate that word, but nonetheless, you know, changes that have uh, uh, that, that you've seen that were uh, necessary to get across what you wanted to do, whether it was the people that you, um, I guess, the mechanics of it, or has it been pretty much uh, fundamentally the way you started it in 2014? What do you think? Um, well, the format has pretty much stayed the same. I mean, if anything, we've, um, yeah, we we start out the planning process almost right after 
you know, we do a recap and then and then we start right away starting to think and about who we can ask and the list is always really long and we always have a <laughs> lot of people to choose from. Yeah. Um, so, but the format is just, uh, and oftentimes the people that we invite will have a sense of whether they want to present on their own or if they'd rather be in conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. And I guess the biggest change is kind of leaving it, not decide, not making all of the decisions ourselves and realizing that our presenters are, are good at this for the most part and are willing to um, play a role in how the event come, goes, goes down. Well, with all the the talent that we have in these communities. And, and I think this also, when you talk about the community, you talk about Maplewood and South Orange. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. So when you when you look at all that talent, um, how do you winnow it down? Or do you, do you have a selection committee? Or do you have public nominations or public input? Or well, is it something that you just kind of know automatically? Um, so we have, we start with our library staff. So we have a very talented library staff. We also have, you know, we have community members that have given us great suggestions. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, you know, as a working group, there are about six of us mm -hmm. who meet regularly and and really, you know, and really have worked together to, you know, fine tune it and come up with a, you know, list like like this year. Um, so it really is. Um, I have a lot of credit to our library staff because they <laughs> they are not only talented themselves, but they know a lot of you know of the talent and creativity in our town. Well, in, as do in, you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, the the um, are there like a set of selection criteria that perhaps you apply, or it, it it's just a question of uh, how you see creativity, and is there any like age limit? I mean, do, young people, old people. Um, I'm just curious. Or has that no, even come up no. before? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've we've never restricted. Um, you know the the, the Playing fields wide open, so and anyone who sparks our interest, um, you know, we'll we'll talk about and, you know, oftentimes it's it's a matter of the of people's availability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, there are people who are, and everyone's always really gracious about the invitation, whether or not they can um, join us. Um, so that that factors into it as well because we do, um, you know, we've. We have these two weeks, and it's you know it varies a little bit from year to year, but and yeah. The, well, the one thing we haven't touched upon yet is that um, at least um, for uh, three or four years, we've had the New Jersey Makers Day has been part of this as well. Yes. So that really is we've had um, is really a family program, um, and that's our our Makers Day at the Hilton Branch Library, which is an amazing event and open. You know, just you know, talk about creativity. It's mm -hmm. you know, ton, everything's going on. Um, but and then we typically have had one additional children's program. Our children's programming at the library is incredibly robust and you know, you know, very very well attended. So the focus was you know when when we started out doing this was a little bit more towards an adult audience, not okay. necessarily adult presenters, but towards an adult audience with one, with one you know program. really That's great right. you know children's program along with the Maker's Day. So that, if there's anything that, that sort of stayed the same, that, that really has. Okay. And, and the Maker's Day is what kicks it off this year, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Every year. Every year the Maker's mm -hmm. Day. And, and what, again, was the, the rationale behind that? It was just to have something family friendly? Or was there, um, did, did it fit into the um, overall concept of the Ideas Festival, perhaps in a way that, you know, I'm not recognizing here? That's a good question, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a statewide event. Statewide. So, okay. right? Yep. So every so libraries across the state are doing it. Okay. Um, and it is, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I think with the theme of ideas, that's what you know. Those yeah. sort of you know, tons of ideas are coming out. You know, like th that's what that's what maker making is. Is just thinking through ideas. You know, innovating and doing um, you know sort of interesting stuff, out of the box stuff, which goes on. Um, we have a maker space at our Hilton Branch Library that is part of our regular library, uh, but this is a way to showcase that and to really you know welcome the community in and um, let them play with the three D printer and uh -huh. all the other um, you know sort of uh, maker stuff that we have at the library. Do, do, do what, what what age of kids will show up typically? All, all, ages. all ages. So and it starts yeah. 
I was actually going to say that that's been a really cool thing about it over the last few years is that as um, you know, making and maker spaces have really taken off, um, and ours has along with it, that the kids have kind of grown That's true. with yeah. the programming. So you'll see kids coming back every year for Maker Day, and the younger kids are coming along too. So there was last year, I wasn't there last year, but you said it was, oh, it was, it was very, packed. it was a wide range. Yeah, and, and what, range yes, and it, uh, you know, um, and incredibly diverse. I mean, so of people of all ages, all backgrounds, um, really, really exciting, you know, everything that's going on in there. Are, are, there, are there any uh, particular inventions or things that were made that, that stand out, you know, one way or another? Just, uh, just you know, either surprising or like a, a three-year-old kid invented a prosthetic hand or something? I mean, well, that, that, I mean, I, that, I don't know if uh, there have been any true inventions, but okay. that, you know, we have made a prosthetic hand at the, in really? the makerspace uh -huh. so with a 3D printer. So there have been, you know, doing prototype things. Um, I think our some of our makers were making a 3D printer from a 3D printer. So yeah. doing, you know, really pretty interesting stuff. And do the participants, <clears throat> if they make something, get to take it home? or? Uh, yes. Oh, that's, yes. That's, that might get me there. I'm yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, with, with the, as long as we're talking about that a little bit, can they, um, like, would they bring something and then it, replicate it? Or, I mean, how exactly does the 3D printer decide how to? So that, I mean, that's just one example. And any time you can send, you can, um, uh, the way it works at our library is if you have something that you need to make, um, you, you can send, you send a file. It, yeah. Um, you have to get a file, so there's no like. Yeah, you do file, need okay. to. You do need to have the uh, software to make something. Okay. Um, or you can come into our Create Space when it's open and 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 use our and software. use our software. And, and the software will actually allow someone to uh, to design and correct uh, and print something. And print We've something. had kids make Lego pieces and you know build toys and. All sorts of things. So, so if I'm missing a Scrabble letter, I can. Uh, you can. I can. Uh, we had a gentleman send in a. He built a piece for his old printer really? that he didn't want to replace. Yeah. That's yeah. intriguing. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's really. And when does when is that? It's uh, Saturday. So that's on Saturday, March 23rd, <laughs> um, from 10 to 1, and that's when everything kicks off. And that's at our Hilton branch. That'll library. be at the Hilton branch. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and and from there, then we move on to the. Um, we only have about a minute left, but when ah. we come back mm -hmm. uh, for the second half, I, I think I'd like to, if we may, just go through the different participants yeah. and, sure. and, and talk about everybody who's there. So will, will both of you be at the Maker's Day, do you think? I will be, yeah. I think I'm working. If I'm not working, I will be there, yeah. <laughs> the 23rd is Saturday, yeah. And, and the Hilton branch is just over there by Springfield Avenue. Yep. Yes, Springfield yeah. and Tuscan. Okay, so if you need something, even something as simple as, I guess, a Scrabble tile, because I have run out of Scrabble tiles on occasion. They, they, do, they do get lost, but yeah. I've got to find the right file. So if you'll stay with us, we're, we'll be back. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll, we'll talk about the, uh, the participants and the recipients of this year's uh, awards and honorees. So stay with us, and we'll be back in a bit. Welcome back. Uh, this is Larry Petricaro. We're at Books in Action, and I'm here with Sarah Lester, who's the director of the Maplewood Library, and Amanda Eigen, who is the head of uh, Library Services. And we were uh, before the break. We were talking a little bit about we were getting into the mechanics and the timing of the um, Maplewood Ideas Festival, and we spent a fair bit of time talking about the Maker's Day, which is going to be at the Hilton Branch. But then the next. Uh, uh, item will be what? It would be the. It would be the, the um, from policy to practice. From policy to practice. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the um, different events that are going to happen over the course of two weeks. Is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first event that's going to happen is with Rachel Braun Sherl, Jennifer Wolf Weiss, and Candace Davenport, and it's entitled "From Policy to Practice: Stripping Down the Language, Business, and Complexity of Women's Sexual Health." 
So perhaps you could tell us a little, that's going to be a panel discussion, I presume? Yes, so that's a panel discussion, a and that. Rachel is going to be participating and moderating the panel. Um, Rachel lives in, um, she's local, and um, she is um, a partner and co-founder of Spark Solutions for Growth, which is a consulting firm. Mm -hmm. And she and her partner um, developed and um, marketed a product for women's sexual health. And in doing so, they found, um, you know, they, I, they were, um, they met with a lot of uh, pushback. And I think Rachel was um, kind of amazed at, um, but probably not surprised, because she's pretty smart, that um, there would be so much pushback on a product that um, really was very similar in many ways to Viagra. Um, and had it been a product for men, it probably would have been full steam ahead. And so, um, so she has written a book called Orgasmic Leadership, which mm -hmm. explores the business of women's sexual health. She is a self-proclaimed vagipreneur and mm -hmm. actually has that, uh, that name um, trademarked, if you will. <laughs> okay. um, and so uh, on the panel with her are Jennifer Weisswolf, who um, she has written a book called Periods Gone Public. She is um, vice president uh, at the Brennan Center um, for justice, which is an NYU. Um, sorry, I want to get it right, and I have my pages mixed up. It's right here. <laughs> Thank uh, you. At I NYU Law. Law, yeah. um, and so her book, Periods Gone Public, taking a stand for menstrual equality, um, was actually um, Gloria Steinem said it was the beginning of liberation for us all. Um, and I met Jen one day in the library. I was working on a Saturday, and we had her book on a display. Um, and she came over and to the desk and said, um, "You know, who who puts the who decides what books are put out?" And I thought, "Oh no, this person <laughs> is going to complain about this book yeah, called yeah. Periods Gone Public." And she said, "I'm the author." And I was like, and I was just thrilled to meet her. And we started talking and. Um, actually, a, a colleague of mine, um, Robin, had suggested, I had forgotten, that Rachel and Jen would be um, great people to share the stage. Um, and then we met with Rachel, and we, we wanted a third person, and mm -hmm. um, Candace seemed like the perfect fit. She is the township um, nurse and health um, health coordinator, is it health? Uh -huh. um, yeah, health educator, sorry, for the Maplewood Health Department. Okay. And um, so we have the policy piece, the business piece, and the public okay. piece of women's health. Now, will all three of them uh, be discussing it, or you, did you say Rachel was going to actually moderate a discussion between the other two? Or? Uh, Rachel's moderating the discussion between all three. They'll all, they'll all, all jump in, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And will the public have a chance to, well, I guess there'll be questions afterwards, right? Yes. Okay. I think that's, that's, um, that's interesting that, that you did that. I think there could have been a time when there would have been some intimidation around that. So um, it's nice to see that the library isn't, a, isn't afraid to bring up topics that are not only timely but important. Thank you. Um, and then next we have Taffy Rodister Ackner. Maybe you can tell us, she's a staff writer at the New York Times. And you can maybe tell us a little bit about her. Um, so she's an amazing writer. And, uh, you know, I've, I saw, I had the opportunity to see her um, interview um, an author at Words. I didn't realize she lived here. And so at that yeah. point, I found out that she lived here. Um, and uh, she is going to be in conversation with the features editor for the New York Times Magazine, Elena Silverman. And we've been lucky to have Elena Silverman be part of the Ideas Festival in the past. Um, so we're really looking forward to this. Um, Taffy writes for the New York Times Magazine. She also writes for the New York Times. And she has a book coming out in June that's already getting rave reviews mm -hmm. called Fleischman is in Trouble. So it's a, um, a novel, right? It's a novel. No. <laughs> um, but she um, has, you know, besides doing all sorts of different things, you know, she has interviewed a lot of celebrities. So I think the in there will be high, you know, interest, <laughs> okay. um, including yeah. Bradley Cooper and Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, so people really in the sort of in current news right now. And, and didn't she, did she write a, a piece about the, um, that neatening up uh, guru 
she probably did. I think I saw yeah. that in, in the magazine section of the Times. So uh, that would be, yeah, that, that's interesting. And I, I would imagine, um, well, I don't know, but maybe magazine writing is different than book writing. It would be interesting to, right. yeah. you know, or, or newspaper writing for that matter. And that could be, you, I hope you'll come to the event and ask that question. No. <laughs> And no, Elena, I, I think I, I do plan to be to that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and you were saying. Well, Elena's background is, um, she comes from a magazine background, so, okay. um, you yeah, know, that's an interesting piece, too. She's also, this is her third her third time featured on the Ideas Festival stage. So oh, yeah. really? That's good. She's a, yeah. yeah. And, and then on the uh, 30th, I guess, we have Chad Hunt Photographer. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about him. Um, well, Chad Hunt is, you know, is, a, is an amazing um, uh, local photography he lives in Maplewood um, and uh, what what's so wonderful is you know we have his work exhibited on our walls mm. so if you come into the library any day uh, this month um, and in April you could see you can come and see it but on March 30th we have a special reception um, with the James White band and Chad will talk about his photography which includes um, he had three uh, he was in uh, th three three times embedded in um, Afghanistan. Hmm. So he has got inc pretty incredible, you know, shots from Afghanistan, including he was he has a, a cover of a Time magazine. Really? Um, so all sorts of things, and he's known locally for doing um, these porch portraits on Halloween. So he's taken pictures of a lot of children okay. in costume. Okay. So he really spans his, you know, he can, you know, take a picture of anything. But, um, <laughs> That's going to be really, really great. Yeah, the photographs are just breathtaking, and they're up now, and it's yeah. really yeah, I'll have incredible. to come down and take a look. And, and then Allison Stewart, I, I know that name because I hear her on WNYC, but mm -hmm. what, maybe you can give us a little bit of background on Allison. Uh, this is another one where I heard, you know, I, actually a friend said to me, um, you should try to get Allison Stewart. Um, and and I was thinking, well, what's the Maplewood connection, you know? And um, she's like, I don't know, just you know, we'll try, you can try to try just to invite her. Out. Just invite her. <laughs> but then I found out that she did have a little bit of a Maplewood connection because her mother was a biology teacher at Columbia High School and she grew up in Glen Ridge. So Allison, um, you know, started she started out on MTV. So um, you know, people may know her from there. But she's done all sorts of things and now is on WNYC and has her own show. Um, and she'll be in conversation with uh, Nancy, oh, Solomon, Nancy Solomon, who also who lives in Maplewood and has and is in you know um, is you know such a great um, radio producer and um, I mean she's just a wonderful you know a wonderful moderator. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is also Nan Nancy has been a great friend of the library as well, and this is her also her third. Yeah, her I've ever seen her last year. Yeah. 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 And Chris Healy. So Chris Healy <laughs> is a um, children's author who lives, he lives in Maplewood, and he is the um, author of The Hero's Guide to Saving Your Kingdom huh. and that whole series of books. Um, and now he has a, a new book out, um, which is A Dastardly Plot, right? That's a uh -huh. new, yeah, that's his new title. And so he's coming to do the children's program, which will be on uh, Tuesday afternoon, April 2nd, at 4. And this will be a real hands-on program for kids how to devise a plot. Yeah, I saw, I saw so that. So that's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. Uh, yeah, I would think that would be quite interesting. The, um, you know, I read a lot of books, and I'm not sure I know what a plot is, so it might be, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> might be fun to find that out. And Dr. Kajida... Khadija Costley White. Yeah, so um, Dr. Khadija Costley White is also uh, local to Maplewood, and is, she's the assistant professor at Rutgers um, uh, in their School of Communications, and she is also um, uh, part active in Soma Justice, and the author of What Even Was the Tea Party? Right-wing activism, media, and politics pre-Trump. I had the privilege of hearing um, Khadija speak at the New Jersey Library Association conference last year in Atlantic City, and she was amazing. And so after um, hearing her there, I said to you know the staff that I really wanted her to be part of the Ideas Festival this year. Um, has she written several books, or I mean, you meant because that's a no, that's, uh, it sounds like it's not a novel, I presume. <laughs> Um, um, I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, but um, this is this is her most recent book. book it came okay. out in August, um, and uh, so we're really looking forward to hearing her. And she's written um, for, she's written lots of articles for um, The Times and The Atlantic and other journals. 
Yeah, and those are pretty prestigious. Yes. Yes. Journals. Yes. And then we have uh, you know, in Thursday, April fourth, Fred Profeta and his brother Paul. Okay, so out of all of the, you know, um, you know, we pull on our local talent, but uh, uh, Fred Profeta and Paul Profeta both grew up in Maplewood and have really stayed local their entire lives, and um, and are extremely accomplished. Um, Fred Profeta, um, many people know him as a former mayor yeah. in Maplewood. Um, but township uh, council. and township, you know, yeah. co committee member. Um, but he's also, you know, started s some of the most important organizations in our town, including um, the um, Coalition on Race, um, and has taken part in many of the, you know, things that have become very the just green team. The green team integral yeah. to Maplewood. Uh, Paul Profeta um, is Fred's younger brother. And uh, he is now um, very prominent in Newark um, and is a developer. Um, but they both, the unifying thing between them both, they both um, really uh, have, um, believe in sustainability and um, figuring out how, how to make, you know, sort of a sustainable world for um, the next generation. Paul Profeta, along with being um, a developer, is also, um, he started Profeta Farms. So he's really <laughs> focused, his focus now is on how to, you know, um, make organic local um, agriculture work. Um, so he's doing that right in, in New Jersey. And sustainability is cruelly important. Yes, it? yes. And finally, and we have about a minute or so left, ah. Tina Kelly. Ah. And, and also, you mentioned at the onset that, or we were talking about it, that the literary award is kind of the, not exactly the centerpiece, but, but, but sort of an important exclamation point yes. is. So very quickly, um, we are so thrilled to have Tina Kelly um, come and we're so honored to have her. We brought some of her books. Tina um, was, uh, she was a, a journalist at the New York Times, part of the Pulitzer Prize winning mm. team, did, did the Portraits of Grief after 9-11. Um, she has won um, uh, the winner of the 2014 New Jersey Poets Prize. So she's a poet, a journalist, um, a nonfiction writer. She's working, working on, on a, novel. a novel right now. Um, and she's been a freelance journalist for a New Jersey Monthly, Atlantic, um, And people. she's a library user. Yes. Oh. And almost all, everybody all here are, is a library yes. user. <laughs> um, but we're really thrilled to honor Tina. And she's very, very deserving of this award. Yeah, certainly have to. And she's done all these different types of writing. It would really yes. be interesting to see how they, uh, yes. they work together. Okay, so the, the Maplewood Ideas Festival starts on Saturday, March 23rd, and ends on Saturday, April 6th, free, open yes. to the public. everything. Uh, we're just showcasing a lot of the talent we have in town. So please uh, join us there. And thank you for joining us in Books in Action. And Sarah and Amanda, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry.